Morning, welcome to Mount Pleasant. Just wanted to share with you before I introduce the service um, something that I read this week. Philippians 4 verses 10 to 14. I think that Paul sums up what we all um, should be aiming for at the moment as lockdown is lifted and we begin to return to normal life. And here he says, I've learned by now to be quite content with whatever my circumstances. I'm just as happy with little as with much, with much as with little. I found the recipe for being happy, whether full or hungry, hands full or hands empty. Whatever I have, wherever I am, I can make it through anything in the one who makes me who I am. I think that's just a beautiful verse from the Bible. This morning's service is going to be taken by Paul Andrews from Freedom Church in Cardiff. Uh, Enjoy the service. I'll see you later.
Pleasant, how are you? Uh, just praying that this finds you well. I had the privilege of being with you guys a year ago, the Sunday before we went into lockdown. I cannot believe that we've been over a year uh, in this pandemic. It's crazy. I don't think anyone foresaw this happening. This has just been one of the craziest times that I have ever lived through, and I'm sure it's the same for you guys as well. And um, but it's such a privilege just to be able to share God's word with you this morning. I remember uh, meeting Les and Bev a number of years ago. I had hair, it's that long ago. Um, and just to be still in contact and still uh, being able to just come and share with you guys is an immense uh, privilege and uh, one I don't take lightly. And I just want to thank you guys just for allowing me to share God's word with you this morning. And so um, if you've got your Bibles with you this morning, I'd love to turn to the book of Matthew, chapter 6. We're going to read two verses from there. It's Jesus' words, because they're in red in my Bible, and it's verse 25 and verse 26. And it says this, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Let's pray. Father, I just thank you for your word. I just ask that you would just speak to us in these moments. Just illuminate uh, your word to us, we pray. Lord, we just open our hearts to receive from you in Jesus' name. Amen. One of the translations of the Bible says, consider the birds. And if you want to put a title on this short talk this morning, it would be this, consider the birds. I don't know about you, but I found over this last year, it's been really easy to find ourselves in the place of fear and worry. Do you know what? I think anxiety has knocked at the door of our hearts for many of us over the course of this year. I remember when this pandemic first broke out, every news channel you put on, social media, everywhere, you could not escape uh, watching people die in Italy or Spain and just watching this pandemic just move across the world and the fear that came with it. I've never experienced anything in my lifetime. I think it's been one of the most challenging times in recent history for the church. I mean, we keep hearing about the big reset and all those sorts of things. And I really do believe it's been a pivotal moment uh, for churches worldwide of how we um, adapt. I mean, I think we've pivoted so well, you know, maybe for some of us, we've never ever done online church before, but all of a sudden we know what it is to broadcast on Facebook and put little services together and all those things. And I think the church has adapted. I think it's been amazing for us to rely on the Holy Spirit and Jesus to help us navigate these times. And I believe that we've connected in God with God in ways that we've never connected before. I believe that we've reached into communities in ways that we've never reached before. And I think that's one of the great things about the church of Jesus Christ is when the going gets tough, it's almost like we respond and we get going. And this scripture really spoke to me uh, throughout the course of the pandemic. Do not worry about your life. But the one verse in verse 26 where it says, consider the birds. And that's what I want us to do this morning. I want us to consider the birds. And as I was considering the birds, but I'm just a disclaimer right now. I am not a bird watcher. I am not a bird ex expert. Everything I've found has been on Google. So um, listen, there's so many of you there that I probably know a lot more about birds, but there's some things that have really fascinated me about a couple of birds. And I'm just going to just, uh, just share about some of them. But one of the birds that really struck me was the Arctic tern. I'm just looking up because I'm just reading some of my notes. The Arctic tern migrates from the Arctic to the Antarctic. It follows the sun. Now, the moment I saw that it followed the sun, I was like, man, you could bring that into a spiritual thing. Consider the birds follow 
the Son. I mean, the Son is the Son of God, Jesus, right? Follow the Son. But these Arctic turn birds, they migrate from the Arctic to the Antarctic. They can sleep and eat while gliding. Man, that just sounds amazing. Imagine being able to eat and sleep at the same time. That would just be incredible. These birds can live to their like 30 uh, years old. They travel 25,000 miles each way. They don't fly in a direct line. They, they, they sort of navigate and follow the sun and they go to different places. But they'll travel up to 25,000 miles one way. Get there. Hang out for a little bit. Get a barbecue on the go. Do whatever birds do. And then decide that they're going to fly back following the sun all the way back, back to some of the same burrows and nesting places that they left. It's almost like these birds have their own navigation system going on. In their lifetime, they can fly over 625,000 miles. I'm just like, man, that just blew me away when I read about those birds. But I want to, there's another bird. I don't know what the type of bird was. And you guys can probably know and know the story of this. But as I was just considering the birds, I found this story of, uh, about these birds that are a lot closer to home. In fact, they were from Pembroke. And apologies if I say this wrong. Please forgive me. Please don't stone me. But is it Skokholm Island there in Pembroke? Uh, after the Second World War, this guy took a couple of birds from the burrows there took them to a beach in Venice and released them and they beat him home. They beat him back to Pembroke. And so he was like thinking, this is a one-off thing. I can't believe the guy's name was Ronald Lockley. He said like, I can't believe this. This must be a one-off thing. But he met this other guy years after the war and they decided they were going to get these birds to America. They tried taking these birds on a, on a ship, but they died on the way. Anyway, this guy flew um, the birds to Boston. As the birds came out of Boston, they released the birds and they flew over 12, 000, over 3,000 miles. It took them 12 days and they flew back to their same burrow, back on Skokholm Island. Birds have this amazing ability to navigate their way home. And I was just reminded of what the psalmist wrote in Psalm 84 verse 5. And it says, blessed is the man whose heart is set on pilgrimage. You know, there's something about us that is set on journeying. But not just journeying, that finding our way home. The birds have this ability to navigate back home. And I thought, you know what? Each one of us is like that. Most of us have spent so long in our home over this year. I don't know about you. I've never been so home so much. I can't wait to escape. I mean, the moment they released lockdown, man, I was out of there. I am out. I mean, one of the most painful things was the local lockdown where you had to stay local. It's okay for you guys and all your beautiful beaches down there. Some of us that are stuck in the city, we're just like trying to escape to the park and trying to find somewhere where it was like green. We just want to escape and get out. We've been stuck in home so long. But do you know what? There's that saying in it, there's no place like home. And I believe that's true. I know some of us are sick of our homes at the moment. Some of us have done so much work in our homes over the course of this year. It's unbelievable. But there is, there's that thing in each one of us. We're trying to find a place to call home. I don't believe that's just necessarily physically, but I also believe that's spiritually. I believe each one of us is on a journey to find our way home. Blessed is the man whose heart is set on pilgrimage. You know, throughout scripture, we see about finding a way home. We see that Jesus came from his home to us, live like one of us, to take us back to a place that we can call home. You know, in John 14, verse 1 to 2, it says this, I go to prepare a place for you. Right now, Jesus is working on our house. He's building something for you and for me. You know, our purpose in life is to know God. In we journey, we're all seeking that place we can call home. You know, there's a story in Luke chapter 15, and it's called the prodigal son. I love Luke 15. It talks about the lost coin, the lost sheep, 
and the lost son. And you know, I believe that each one of us at some stage in our life has been lost. I don't know about you. Have you ever set out somewhere and got lost? It can be quite frightening. You know, it's okay nowadays because we've got sat nav, right? But back in the day when I learned to drive, we had a map, we had an atlas. I mean, it's unbelievable. I look at it now. I think, man, how did we ever get by without sat nav? But we'd have this like atlas and you'd be, have to plot your journey and sort of your driving and trying to find your way like on this atlas. And if you had a, had a passenger, that was their job, right? They were the navigator. They had to find the way and lead you to the place where you're going. Like, man, I thank God for sat nav. Not all technology is bad. It's just unbelievable technology. But just like the prodigal son, I believe each one of us has been lost. But the prodigal son, he comes to that point in his life and he just says, I need to find my way home. You know, I believe there's a, our nation is trying to find its way home. I believe our towns and our cities, our villages and our neighbours are trying to find their way home. Not to the houses that they live in, but they're trying to find the reason why they exist. They're trying to find the purpose of why they exist. Who am I? Why am I here? What am I doing here? And I believe as we consider the birds, the birds know how to find their way home. They fly great distances, yet they find their way home. Here's the beauty that Jesus came to find us. He's never been lost. That always makes me chuckle when people say, I found God. He's not been lost. It's always us that are lost. The lost coin, the lost sheep, and the lost son. You can read it in Luke 15. It's three great stories, but the prodigal son in Luke 15, he comes to this point where he says, I need to find my way home. And I believe that our friends, our neighbours, the people that are around us are all trying to find that place that we can call home. There's that thing within each one of us, desires to find that place that we call home. You know, just like the map, many of us have been going in a direction, but it's been the wrong direction. Anybody ever been there? You set out, just like the birds set out to migrate somewhere, yet we've got off course and we found ourselves in a place that we shouldn't have been in. Maybe we've ended up in the wrong relationship. Maybe we've ended up in different paths that we never ever imagined we'd end up in because we took a wrong turn. I want to say to you today that you can find your way home, that there is a, a thing within each one of us that is yearning for God. I call it the God-shaped vacuum. You see, I believe that we were intelligently made by an intelligent creator. We're an intelligent design. I believe there's a God-shaped vacuum in our lives that only God can fill and we won't find happiness, we won't find peace, we won't find true joy, the true meaning of life until God fits that hole that is in our lives. And I believe that's the God-shaped vacuum. I believe that some of us are journeying through life. We're just headed in the wrong direction. And this morning or this afternoon or wherever you find yourself watching this, I just believe that God wants to show himself to you. I just would encourage you to pray a dangerous prayer. Maybe that's something like this, that God, if you were real, would you reveal yourself to me? You know, we're moving, but sometimes we move in the wrong direction. There's nothing worse than setting out to go somewhere and ending up at the wrong place. Anyone ever done that? You set off on a journey and you end up in the wrong place. You were moving, but you were moving in the wrong direction. Anybody ever done that? You were supposed to be going south, but you headed north. And you know what? I believe our lives without Jesus are just like that. We're heading in a direction, but we're heading in a wrong direction. Jesus in John 14 Verse 1 to 2, it says that he went to build a mansion for us. And the disciple says, but how do we find our way? And Jesus says, I am the way, the truth and the life. Consider the birds. Matthew 26, it says this, look at the birds. For they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they. This morning, I just want to remind you that you are valuable to God, that you are precious to him. 
One of the beautiful parts of Luke 15 is this. It says the prodigal son decides to return home. It says that while he was a long way off, his father saw him and he ran to him. The father, father God this morning. You might be a long way from God this morning. I want to tell you, he's not there pointing his finger at you. He's there with his arms open wide. He's running towards you. Jesus didn't die on the cross with a pointed finger. He died with his arms outstretched for you. And he is calling you home this morning. And I just want to encourage you, wherever you find yourself this morning, give your life to Jesus. Give your life to the Father. Come home to the Father. You can do that by praying a very simple prayer, a prayer that goes something like this. It says, Lord Jesus, I realize that I'm a long way from home. But today, I choose to come home. And so if you find yourself in that place, find yourself making that cry of your heart today, I just encourage you, get in touch with someone from the church and just say, hey, this morning, I want to know more. How do I find my way home? And I know there's people that would love to pray with you and help you find your way home. Our communities, our, va- our cities and our towns, they're looking to find their way home. And the great news is, church, that we can lead them there. Church, I pray this finds you well. I pray that you're blessed and can't wait to see you soon. God bless. Oh
cross as you wait for the crown Tell the world of the treasure you found
Thank you, Paul, for our message. And thank you to our wonderful worship group, as always, who are absolutely fantastic with the worship songs they prepare for us every single week and continue to do. I want to return to Paul again. We've got a theme of Paul's today. And I just want to end uh, by praying the grace which Paul taught um, in Corinthians, in 2 Corinthians um, chapter 13. And I think that everybody is familiar with this prayer, but it is so important and so powerful. So I'd like to close in prayer. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.